Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. This is the daily chart of Bitcoin from ClarkMoody.com and we're hovering about 925 or so. We've been battling to try to get over and stay over that thousand price. We are seeing higher highs and higher lows so we still are in an uptrend but it's starting to weaken and it looks like we're beginning to roll over it could go either way but we'll look at that when we get over to Bitcoin wisdom now the market depth if you remember the low that I saw was around that 19,000 now we've got quite a few more coins on here with about 24,000 total being offered and if we go to that key 10,000 level that's hovering around the 1050 price on the ask and it's about 750 on the bid so the middle of that's going to be about 900 that's about where we're trading that is a little bit bearish to see that many coins come on the exchange I was hoping that we were going to see a shortage but apparently a lot of other people are coming on trying to take some profit now again we don't know how many of those are going to take their profits but then leave the money on the exchange to try to come back in and buy back at a lower price or others who are just selling their bitcoins for now and taking a profit we also don't know how much of this is organizations like BitPay and we've had an article recently talking about how Bit BitPay is adding thousands of new merchants so if that's the case then they're going to have to transact in Bitcoin for dollars on the markets because they're trying to lock in a price so we just don't know how many of these bitcoins are involved in those transactions that's just a guess now over to Bitcoin wisdom this is the main chart from Mt. Gox they pretty much look the same if we go over to Bitstamp BTCE and now this is named Huobi. I'm not sure why that is. It used to be BTC China. So maybe they got renamed. Uh, or maybe that's a, a bigger exchange over in China. Pretty much the same picture even with Litecoin. We've got a very similar form formation here on all of them. The question is going to be, is this the forming up of a type of ascending pennant formation if it is then we're going to see a correction down to right about where we are at and then a bounce back up and a gradual working off of the overhead support to create that pennant that will ultimately result in a breakout of that 1250 high and then a run towards new highs now if that's not the case we're looking at a sort of descending double top formation and that could be the case the big thing we want to look at here is the volume we can see since the bottom that we put in after the big decline the volume has been very light so there hasn't been decisive volume one way or another most of the volume has been gradual accumulation these two big red spikes were when we got that test up to 1100 and then sold off and then there's been more gradual accumulation the last two are very small amounts of selling so the decisive point is going to be the support somewhere around 800 if we round off and get below that then it's going to be most likely a double top formation and then we're looking for tests of this low or perhaps even the ultimate low of the old high down around 250 on the other hand we're looking to get a breakout above that 1100 price to confirm a building of this pennant formation and of course I pointed out before the ascending flag or pennant formation is the most bullish of of all formations that you have you always have that type of formation or virtually always have that type of formation before you get a breakout into new highs so that's what we'll be watching we'll be watching those key levels of 1100 and 800 
to try to determine which way this thing's going to go. Now I want to take you over to the main story of the night. Somewhat of a shocker that Gavin and Dreesen has accepted an invitation to answer questions at a session before the Council on Foreign Relations. Now he posted this last night. You know, uh, Gavin is the lead core Bitcoin developer. He says, I've accepted an invitation to do a question and answer session at the Council on Foreign Relations, CFR, in Washington, D.C. on Thursday, February 6, 2014. I've been told anything related to the Council on Foreign Relations tickles people's grand conspiracy buttons. So I thought it would be best to be open about exactly what will happen. I hope it doesn't spark a long thread as my visit to the CIA, but Bitcoin is a lot bigger than when I visited the CIA. Anyway, here's the invitation I received. On behalf of the Council on Foreign Relations, I write to invite you to speak to our Washington-based members as part of our Voices of the Next Generation series. This program seeks to bring together our members bring together our members with fresh young voices in the nation's foreign policy discourse. Given your work with Bitcoin, you would be an important addition to the series. In the past, the Voices of the Next Generation series had featured and it names these other people. CFR is a nonpartisan national membership organization and think tank as well as the publisher of foreign affairs among our members are many past and present u.s presidents secretaries of state defense and treasury as well as other senior u.s government officials renowned scholars and major leaders of american business media and non-governmental groups the format of the event will be a 90-minute question and answer session moderated by somebody yet to be determined it will be, quote, on the record, meaning press could be invited to attend and recordings and or transcripts may be posted on CFR's website. The audience will be CFR members and invited guests, maybe press. It's not open to the public. Big surprise. I'm not getting paid by the CFR. So we get the reactions and it's interesting that we have this word conspiracy of course conspiracy is the word that they trot out anytime they want to simply discredit anyone this is from coin revo the word conspiracy theory is for hiding behind the straw man people in the u.s just don't realize that their capitalistic system is a corporate system through and through they don't even notice it and corporatism means that business and government co-opt into a single net of power and it's exactly institutions that CFR that stand for this of course if you're inside that bubble you don't realize it and think everything is just fuzzy and perfect etc and he goes on but the comment I like the most down here is from BTC usury and he says if you check the CFR Board of Directors, you'll find the names of some of the, quote, democratically elected leaders, end quote, who directly lied to the world in order to justify wars of aggression against foreign nations. There are also several lesser known figures that might have participated at a lower level in the facilitation of the murders of hundreds of thousands of people. And I would bet 25 bitcoins that most of those who don't fit into either of those two categories fit into the third category, war profiteers. That's not to say there are no good people in the CFR, but know who it is, what it is, and what we are talking about. This is not by any stretch of the imagination an organization with your or our best interests at heart. These are millionaires and billionaires seeking to influence and direct government policy for their personal benefit and amusement. So that's the comment by BTC Usury. Gavin, obviously, with his comment about conspiracy theories, grand conspiracy buttons, he's on the one side, 
and uh, other people on the other side. So rather than trying to delve into a bunch of conspiracy websites and investigations into the CFR, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with conspiracy theories about the CFR, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderbergers, the Council of 300, etc., etc. It goes on and on and on. All these various groups that are supposedly trying to control the world, bring in the new world order, create a one world government, a one world bank. Rather than going into that, I would just like to quote to you quotations either from their publication itself, which is Foreign Affairs, that's the publication that they publish, or from members or former members of the CFR and what they had to say about the CFR, its mission and purposes. So let's take a look at these quotes. They're in no particular order. The new world order will have to be built from the bottom up rather than from the top down. But in the end run around national sovereignty, eroding it piece by piece will accomplish much more than the old-fashioned frontal assault. Richard Gardner, CFR member, writing in the April 1974 issue of the journal Foreign Affairs. So that pretty much sums it up there for you. That is actually from their publication that they intend to make an end run around national sovereignty. Can't be much clearer than that. And that's pretty much what we've seen. Here's Arthur Schlesinger. I'm sure you're all familiar with him. Quote, we are not going to achieve a new world order without paying for it in blood as well as in words and money. That's a lovely sentiment. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected the promises of discretion, remember, meeting not open to the public, for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity during those years. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. David Rockefeller, member CFR. Quote, the powers of financial capitalism had a far-reaching aim, nothing less than to create a world system of financial control in private hands, able to dominate the political system of each country and the economy of the world as a whole. This system was to be controlled in a feudalist fashion by central banks of the world acting in concert by secret agreements arrived at in frequent meetings and conferences. The apex of the systems was to be the Bank for International Settlements in Basel, Switzerland, a private bank owned and controlled by the world's central banks, which were themselves private corporations. Each central bank sought to dominate its government by its ability to control treasury loans to manipulate foreign exchange to influence the level of economic activity in the country and to influence cooperative politicians by subsequent economic rewards in the business world. Carol Quigley, member of the Council on Foreign Relations, mentor to Bill Clinton from his book Tragedy and Hope. 1966. Quote, the sovereignty fetish is still so strong in the public mind that there would appear to be little chance of winning popular assent to American membership in anything approaching a super state organization. Much will depend on the kind of approach which is used in further popular education. 1944 Council on Foreign Relations report. Quote, let us face reality. The framers of the U.S. Constitution have simply been 
too shrewd for us. They've outwitted us. They've designed a se separate institutions that cannot be unified by mechanical linkages, frail bridges, or tinkering. If we are to turn the founders upside down, we must directly confront the constitutional structure they erected. James McGregor Burns, Council on Foreign Relations, member 1984. Last quote, the Council on Foreign Relations is the American branch of a society which originated in England believer, and believes national boundaries should be obliterated and one world rule established. Again, Carol Quigley, and uh, he's the author of Tragedy and Hope, and he was Bill Clinton's mentor. So there are their goals in their own words this is not me saying this is what they believe in this is themselves saying what they believe in they believe in undermining national sovereignty they believe in undermining the constitution and they believe in the creation of a world government and of course a one world central bank that is their goal those are their beliefs it's not really open to debate so the question of course is why is Gavin going to speak before them uh, I'm not gonna fault him for that after all if Bitcoin is what we think it is then perhaps it should be tested by going right into the Vipers den and see if there's anything they can do to it now I would advise that you keep your eye on alternate cryptocurrencies after all this is the lead developer so it's very good that the cat is out of the bag and there are a lot of other competitors to Bitcoin I want to take you over to crypto market capitalization and crypto coin market cap these are two different sites coinmarketcap.com is the one that I've always used now the reason why the gentleman who came up with cryptmarketcap.com put his site up is that he does not list the cryptocurrencies that have been pre-mined or controlled or ones that are not true peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrencies in the sense that Bitcoin is now the first thing you notice when you compare these sites is that if you go down to the bottom and look at the total market cap we've got 11 billion dollars on crypt market cap and we've got thirteen point six billion dollars on coinmarketcap.com so that's a big difference now the ones here that aren't listed you can see them here I think it's about a 2.5 billion dollar difference the big one of course you can see with the asterisk ones that are listed with the asterisk it says down at the bottom not mineable so these are cryptocurrencies that are not mineable for me that's a huge red red flag and of course we have ripple we have mastercoin and we have nxt those are the ones that are on the one list and they are not on the other list and you can see that makes a difference of about two and a half billion dollars now that probably should give you pause just to start with why are those so heavily weighted when we have so many others of these cryptocurrencies ones that have been around for a very very long time Litecoin Peercoin Namecoin you can see Namecoin comes in here at only a 48 million dollar market cap uh, that's going to be 160th or so of the total market cap of those other three so and also here is quark coin that's one i consider a quasi one it was pretty much pre-mined but again it, it, this is a distinction between those that are mineable and those that aren't we've got world coin we've got prime coin feather coin nova coin so a lot of coins 
been around for a long time, nowhere come close to the market cap of those others that are not mineable. So for me, that's a big red flag. It's not necessarily conclusive, but it is a big red flag to keep an eye on them. It seems that their market cap may be pumped up. There's no real way to know for sure. So the main story of the night is going to be the CFR. It's going to be very interesting to watch and see what happens, what comes out of that. Of course, we may not ever hear what comes out of that because these shadowy groups have admitted in their own words that they aren't too keen on having the light shed on what they're doing because that would cause pop popular opposition to what they're doing because the people generally aren't behind an erosion of the sovereignty of their nations. They generally aren't behind an erosion of their constitution and they're generally not behind one world government and new world order. So that's probably the main reason why these people have to operate in the shadows. Good luck to Gavin and hopefully Bitcoin is going to be able to take them head on and withstand what I think is probably an attempt at subversion but we'll see if it succeeds. Keep your uh, powder dry and maybe some investments in some alt currencies as well just in case uh, the possibility occurs that Bitcoin is co-opted and we'll talk to you next time.